day two of Gino's journey to greatness. <laughs> so we'll send him around a little bit again and just see if we need to revisit and start from the bottom or whether he's just going to pick up where he left off. And I don't really ever take that for granted. Some horses will just pick up where they left off. Others start at the bottom every day. And it takes a little bit longer to get the idea across. This guy is pretty smart, so I'm not really expecting that I'm going to have to go all the way back to the bottom. Because the great horses usually go through things once and then they're all pretty cool about it and they keep it keep it working. So I'm going to hunt him around a little bit when I put the saddle on and I will check his go, like his go button and how willing he is to do that in a little bit. So there's no need to hunt him around now. I'd like him to run around more with the saddle on anyway. Again, I'm just going to swap this over just because this lead's a little shorter while I saddle him up. That'll be an edit. <laughs> I'll leave this on while I do it. So we're on day two and we pushed him around a bit yesterday and made sure he was going. And today he's a lot more looking to me for what comes next. So a little bit different order, I'm gonna do more of the desensitizing work first. Because we've had our conversations about when I ask him to go, he's gotta go, etc. So today is just going to little check over before I hoik a saddle on him. Like we said yesterday, not really caring too much about that. Other than when we did that, so we'll double check there and he's cool with that. So, I talked yesterday about giving things a rating. Um, and he passed all those tests really well you know, nine or 10 out of 10. The bumping here, when I just asked him to step back, he's kind of crowding my space. If he gets a fright and jumps forward, he's gonna jump on top of me. And he should always be respectful of my space and stay out of the way. And I politely asked him to move back and he just stood there and let me lean on the holder. You know, like, well, I'm not moving my feet. So I bumped on him like, I've already asked you nice, now you gotta move. And again, like we talked about yesterday, we're going to trade this off for the girth. Because I want him good in the girth where I put a uh, rear cinch. And even if I never, and I don't use a rear cinch personally, I did way back years ago when I used to do team roping, but I don't ride with one, but my leg's going to go all through here. So if he's used to this rope around through here, I know he's going to be okay. Um, coming back here is just really checking because obviously some horses are very sensitive here. You could be riding out through the bush and something brushes his flank. I don't want him reacting to it. So we'll check all those areas again. And we didn't get a massive reaction out of this yesterday, so I'm not really expecting too much today. And the first person I saw doing this was off a horse using a 60 foot lariat rope, which is really cool, but I have nowhere near that level of skill with a rope. 
The other part I found with a lariat rope, it's a bit stiff and some horses are a little thin skinned. If I was a little firm, they get marked up. Which isn't a big deal, it was only a little bit of hair, but we still obviously prefer not for them to get marked or hurt or too uncomfortable if we can help it. It's this really soft cotton rope. And again, little tugs. It's more I'm trying to tickle and see what he's going to do about it. And of course we got way, even less reaction than yesterday. I've had sometimes, you know, a horse will run around and this rope will end up all over the place and horses turn. You know, if the rope got wrapped around here, and again, it's pretty much just my hand holding it. And a lot of people ask, well, why would you do that? Because I'd like to think if he got caught up in a fence overnight, when I came out the next day, he'd be standing there waiting for me to let him out. So as part of that conditioning, I'm never gonna rope his back feet and do that kind of thing. But it's just a little desensitizing and I'd like to judge his reaction. And again, this guy is handled, so the problems that are gonna rise with him aren't gonna be so much fear. It's gonna be a little bit of, you know, who's making the decisions at times. Some things will be a lot easier, like these things we're running through today. Some things will be harder. As they say, every horse is different. Hundred percent true. So one thing I didn't do yesterday, we did a lot of swinging the lead rope around. And one that I miss that's very common, again, not such a, a massive deal with this kind of horse, is flipping that around his hip and getting him to move off that pressure. And one thing I'll do, and hopefully he'll kind of demonstrate it here at some point when he doesn't move, is I'm not trying to yank him through there. Like I've seen people do this especially like this horse, he, he kind of knows what to do. It's real tempting to just go, wow, well, you should listen and pull him through. So he's got a little problem and I'm just taking the slack out, but I'm not really pulling. So I'm trying to check his problem solving abilities. I'm not making him turn and get off the rope. I'm just setting him up in a situation and giving him time to think about it. And it's very easy on a horse like him to say, well, you should turn around and do that much quicker. Although this horse is doing a great job anyway, so. But I've had horses just kind of stand there and move their head and play with it. And then they sort of come around and I just keep taking the slack out and they stand here for a while and then go, well, what if I did that? and they turn around and all the pressure goes away and they feel really smart. Which is another thing I'd like to get happening too, is get it, get it done but make him feel like he's, he's real smart at the same time. He wasn't really having a problem with it, he just got a little distracted. But again, it's way too early for me to go you shouldn't be distracted, you should be totally focused. You know, he's a baby and he's in preschool. You know, if he's an older horse, I might do that. But much older horse, much more advanced. But these ones, uh, flicking the lead rope around is pretty important. Because when I get on him, I'm gonna do a fair bit of that too. Little subtle things like, I was here, I went to walk this way, he anticipated and you kind of barged off there. If I'm leading and he's following, he should have waited a bit longer till I got out here and it was obvious I was walking here, or I got over here and it was obvious I was walking there. It's great that he's thinking and he's anticipating and he's trying to help out, but he can't take over. He must wait for each thing. 
and I had to sort of bump a little quicker because he was moving a little quicker. G'day, thank you so much for watching. If you could like, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications bell, that would be awesome. Thank you, cheers. So we chucked the pad all over him yesterday. No reason, and he didn't care about that. So no real reason to think he's gonna have a big problem with this today. So a lot of this is gonna be pretty cursory today because he was so a pretty run of the mill <laughs> because he took it all so well yesterday. I can throw the saddle up on the right side. I don't sort of always see the need for it at this stage. But if I was gonna throw it up on this side, and I might do a little tutorial video on some basics and throwing a saddle on would be an important one. I tend to grab the back of the saddle and have it in line with my arm. This hand up the front, look where I'm going. Need to make sure I got his attention here and aim so that that lands nice. Gets over him. And again, he's not a horse who's lacking in confidence. So he comes around to look and he gets a little too inquisitive. I'm more inclined to say, hey, you know, mind your space. If he was more defensive and scared, I'd be like, oh, okay, just don't get too close. And I might've just pushed him back out of the way. My responses are always, you know, different. but they can change on a horse. Like we went through yesterday, we went through periods where he was aggressive and then he was looking for a friend. And I need to be ready to look for that too. I can't just take it, well, he's a little spoiled, so I'm just gonna push him around and be tough the whole time. And that's how we build trust. You know, like a lot of people talk about building trust and I've had people in the past say, oh, your horses really trust you and I, I didn't know what I did that was maybe special to create that. But I think always being fair is a big deal. Sometimes I need to be tough and I'll be tough when it's cold for, but when he's looking for a friend, I'm gonna be there for him too. So we're riding a horse, if we were working a horse here is really green and defensive, I'm staying back because sometimes they'll run and bark just at that. And he's obviously pretty cool. We've prepared him with things and he's pretty quiet, so it's not a big deal. We'll bump that up a hole. Get him to walk again. And again, you know, we'll shortcut if that horse isn't really needing it. As I was saying yesterday, I do tend to go through a bit of a checklist of stuff. But at the same time, if he's whipping through that checklist, I don't overdo it. I don't want to bore him to death either. Oh no. 
And even that's a little moment to show that I care. Lucky trotted around, he's obviously relaxed and he chewed, but me coming in and patting him is just enough to reassure him. And it's those little moments, because there's other moments I might have to be slapping him on the butt and being aggressive. But those little moments when, you know, it's a bit quiet and he's looking for a friend and he's just checking my attitude. I need to be watching for those. work on leading up and I don't think he's going to be a real good example because he's going to lead up pretty well but when he bailed I put pressure and I wait for him to come forward and make it slack and there's pressure he comes forward and makes it slack I don't try to keep pulling but we might need another horse to demonstrate that because this guy's a little too willing like he knows where to go to get away from pressure He's been taught to lead well, and he ties up, so. So we've come up a few and the girth is quite firm now and a quick, you know, statement of my sort of feelings on tight girths and loose girths. Nobody, if they're wearing a backpack, likes it to be loose. Like most backpacks are engineered to, there's a cinch strap and there's a whole bunch of straps because if that backpack's moving it around, it annoys the hell out of you. And I feel the same thing happens with a saddle. You know, some people really leave them really loose and it's, it's good they don't have too much restriction, but if it's moving around a lot, that can also be annoying. And especially when that saddle's going forward and back and you're pushing into their withers, I think that's a big deal. And you know, we're potentially hopping on him today, so if I do that, I don't want that saddle moving around too much, you know, if he gets real active. And he obviously looks very stressed about it all. <laughs> so like I said earlier, I, I do want to hunt him around for the same reasons I talked about on day one. Like some people will trot their horse on a lunge and they really don't do anything till they break into a canner. And he's got the freedom of the yard to play like he did yesterday. And we're getting him up into a cannon. And that's a big deal. Oh, now. And yes, there's quite a few times then when he wanted to look up face up but he's a little different he doesn't need heaps of reassurance and I do need to be able to make sure I can push him somewhere And then I'll stop moving, obviously, and offer it to him, like, do you want to stop? And he's like, I wanted to stop after the first circle, I've had enough. But even compared to yesterday, like, we had a big conversation about it all yesterday with him sort of doing little sideways kicks and getting a bit aggro. And today, there's virtually no aggression at all.
and we'll go through he's a little closer to the camera today so just make sure he's clear of the fence a bit of what i was talking about yesterday when i asked him to move his hindquarter my hand's going to be about where my foot would be and in his case i'm just going to push open-handed if he got really tough i might reinforce my thumb and have to push but i think we can just tip his nose towards me push his hip the other way real soft and then I pat him in that area too. So like I said, moving his front, I could either just push his nose over with my hand or I could use my elbow to push his cheek and my hand on his neck. And with this hand level with that stirrup, pushing his front. So where, and you'll see how it translates in the next few days. One rain stop, getting him to move his rump away from my leg, getting him to move his front end away from my leg and how that's going to blend into teaching him to side pass and direct bend and counter bend and all of those cool exercises he's going to have to do as an older educated horse. And he might go and do some western dressage and he's got to learn shoulder in and leg yield as well. So he stepped across then but he went forward a bit too much. I could have stayed in front and blocked him a bit more but I just chose to bump that holder and say, hey, stay here with me. So we'll do the same on this other side, but I just spin it around saying, you get an idea of my hand placement. There, just pushing nice, head towards me, pushing his hip. And he's not really moving his hip there, he's kind of resisting got stiff i want his there that one so if you looked at his feet he was kind of moving his front he was a little stiff through the front end it was only that last step where he just kind of got soft through the neck and then moved his hip and that was the one i was waiting for that yield where his hip just went and the same here we just do his front And again, just a little intrusive of my space. So he's coming around a turn. I'm a little bit in his way. Rather than slow down and condense himself, he's kind of pushing into my space again. It's like, no, no, you gotta stay back. But you can see he didn't get stressed about it. He's just like, oh, okay. You know, different lesson. So we can push him on the chest. And today I'm just using the rope to push him back. We could do that over his nose. It's obviously not much different to the halter. We talked about a lot about that yesterday. The push, and he moves his feet and moves straight into a release. We'll push on top, and he moves down and finds that release. And then I'll go for another step. We got something over there he needs to look at. There we go. And it's another job that, you know, it needs to be done on both sides. Because like we talked yesterday about him facing up in both directions, I want to make sure he's happy to look at me out of both eyes. And we'll do a little bit of that wiggling and backing up. Okay, cool. We'll give him a little break. I just need to grab my helmet and we might ride him. Oh, we might. Oh, okay, if he wants to go for a move, let's move him while he wants to move. So I'm a bit big on doing that because this guy's a little bit. I'm not real concerned about his, about whether he's going to be bothered. I'm a little bit more concerned about his work ethic. 
And if you'll notice before, when he was going to the left, he turned right, wanted to turn, there we go. And he wanted to turn to me around to the right. I just wanted to make sure he's gonna turn left as well. Good. He's really preparing long before I get there, which is great. And again, you can do these ones until it's really, and leave yourself really open and give him space and keep encouraging him to move out. And you can certainly do that, but I don't find it's 100% necessary for me to hop on. But depends a little on the horse's emotional state too. If I had a very scared one, I might do more of that. Okay, so I'll have a little break and I just gotta grab my helmet and a couple of bits of stuff and we'll go run. These chaps make my butt look big. <laughs> okay, so everyone has their gear that they like or don't like to ride in on that first ride. Um, a lot of people here in Australia use a stock saddle. I'm in Australia and it's Australia day. But I kind of, I like this old saddle and I like the seat. It's a cutting performance saddle. And I kind of like to have a little bit of room to move if they're jumping around. I do have a panic handle on it. And I am wearing a helmet and I'd love to wear my cowboy hat and look cool but you just never ever know. So I do at least for a while wear a helmet and if you question your riding ability at all, you 100% should be wearing a helmet every time you're on a horse. But obviously it's his first ride ever in his life. And I've seen people who are really, really good at starting horses, like insanely good at starting horses. Every now and again, you know, it's a little bit wrong and that horse gets a little upset. You know, I don't want to find out the hard way that maybe I missed something. And then there's times with a horse like him, I think he's going to argue a little, but it's not going to be out of fear. It's just going to be because he's like, really, i got to cut your fat butt around. Um, it's been a long time since I hopped on a horse that bucked out of fear. If I've prepared them well on the ground, I make sure I've prepared them as well as I can so when I get on, they're not really scared of me. And that's a big deal because a horse who's bucking out of fear, he puts a lot of effort into it. You know, it's like a snake drops out of a tree and lands on your shoulders and you're not ready. You're gonna put effort into jumping around trying to get rid of it. But if somebody shows you that it's a a harmless python and you got time to assess it and look at it and you know it's all good you might pick it up and not have such a big problem with it so i'm trying to make sure that he's well prepared and like we said fear ain't going to be a factor and a little bit of this is shortcutted because i think i said yesterday sometimes i'd spend two weeks doing all of this. But this horse has kind of gone through it all and he's passed all these tests really well, so he doesn't need me to overdo it. So we may as well get on and, you know, get moving and do some more. But it's up to me as a horseman to really assess, you know, where he's at, is he ready to get on, all of that kind of stuff. Or does he need a little bit more prep work? G'day, thank you so much for watching. If you could like, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications bell, that would be awesome. Thank you, cheers. Um, I wear chinks because I like a little bit more grip and leather to leather gives me more grip or explain why I got a helmet. If I was worried about him, you know, if he was, 
if I thought I'd done everything, but I still wasn't a hundred percent sure, and I, you know, was concerned, I do wear a safety vest as well, like a proper equine safety vest. Um, I'm, you know, very confident this horse isn't going to do anything too major. So, you know, we'll hope I'm right on that. And I never take it for granted. I've a hundred percent got everything sorted. I'm always humble enough to realize that, you know, I could be running into that horse that's just about to prove me wrong. Okay, so like we said yesterday, got that lead, got a good chunk of mane. Get on up. So usually my first port of call, riding this sort of horse, or any sort of horse is to get up here and do that little bit of sacking out that I did on the ground. So on the ground he's had the lead rope flipped all around him and he doesn't care. So I'm about to do the same. So there's a little bit of that. I'm going to grab hold of my monkey handle just in case anything happens. I'm going to move my legs around because I can't ride him like that and not move. I need to be able to move around. He's already had me put my hand from there to there. So when I get on him, and I've swung my stirrup from there to there. So when I get on him, that's one of those things, you know, can I move my legs all over him? Can I touch him from his shoulder through to his flank and have him not care too much? So he's really cool with that moving around. He doesn't care at all about me moving around. But like I said, I don't think that's gonna be this guy's issue. It's gonna be more when I say, hey, you gotta go. And he's like, I'm not carrying your fat butt around. You can do that yourself. So I'd like to go through all this sacking out that I did on the ground from horseback before I ask him to move. Because I want him to know that if I'm moving it is not necessarily aggressive because in his case when I do ask him to move later I might have to get a little aggressive and say no no you got to go when you're told. But he he hasn't really done much today to show that it'd be a big problem. And he's moved forward really quite freely while I was on the ground. So, you know, there's a reasonable chance he might just move off pretty cool too. And we could do some little bends, although that's not necessarily imperative for me, but sometimes it's a good way to start moving. So if he doesn't want to move, obviously a horse is a little bit more concerned. They tend to move off on their own. I don't have to work at it too much. But him, I'm, I'm going to try to get him to move with the least fuss possible. And I'm always trying to avoid an argument. But there's the odd horse that that argument will come and it's going to happen and you just kind of go through it. What you're hoping is that you've prepared them well enough that the argument's not too big. And if I nip it in the bud, like any argument, if I fix it when it's small, it's so much easier to fix. If I keep, if I keep on a negotiation table for too long, you know, they can get, you know, just annoyed. And you know, they feel like we're nagging them. Which is another reason I will step him up into a walk, trot and canter today. Because that's going to be his job going forward. I don't necessarily just walk the first day. You know, and I walk till he's cool with that and then trot. Obviously, you can see I don't long rein him a bunch. I'm not trying to get up here and train him a whole lot on the ground. I'm doing a lot of things that I think are very important for him mentally. but I don't need him to, you know, back off a bit 
turn with a bit, all that kind of stuff. So another quick reason why we start in a halter, we're always going to have arguments or discussions on a young horse like, well, I'd like you to go over there. And he's going, but the other horses are over there. And I need you to go over there and we'll, we'll have an argument. And I'm going to probably have to pull on his nose a bit. So I'd rather have all those little arguments out of the way so he gets to that point, you know, okay, you're making the decisions. And then I teach him some basics about moving off my leg and all that kind of stuff. And I'll do that in a little bozel. And, you know, all of those, you know, basic controls about who's making the decisions, that's all gone before I put a bit in his mouth. And I think I've just got horses better that way. I put horses in bridles in the second or third ride and they turned out okay, but I think overall I get a much softer result. Having all the main things done in a halter and a bozel, and then when I get to a bit, you know, he's not, we're not still having that discussion about who's making the decision sort of thing. So he might be in, you know, just that sort of deal for three to four weeks possibly longer, maybe six weeks, before I put a bit on him. So we've sacked him out a lot, and we've bent him around a bit, and he's still not offering forward, which is again, kind of what I thought he was gonna do. So I'm gonna have to ask him to go, and that might be where we have a little argument. So I'm just gonna tap him on the butt, And when he goes, of course, it stops. There's not much point kicking him at this stage because kicking him to go forward is a trained response. Like you're attacking his belly. You know, saddle bronc riders attack their belly to make them buck. Well, I'm not after that. So I am going to squeeze and I'll move my legs a little. But a lot of it's going to be that clock. And even then, like the lead rope was just bumping my leg. It's not really bumping him. So while he's walking and he hasn't got too concerned, I'm gonna do a little bit of just sacking him out again. Legs forward and back, rubbing him down. Cause I can rub him with my feet and my legs can be actually, you know, a source of reassurance. It's like I'm patting him with my feet. And later on, I'm gonna ask him to move off my leg and I will put a spur on and he's gotta step up and be a big boy. But right now, I just want him to be really cool with me being on him, moving around. And the next thing is, yeah, we need to be doing those ones while he's moving. And we sacked him at a standstill. So now we're going to do a little bit of sacking him out with that lead rope on the move. So he's pretty cool. Like people have clucked to him and asked him to move on the ground before. So he does associate that clucking with he's got to move his feet. Oh, he's stopping for a number two. We'll let him do that. He's going to be a competition horse, so he will have to learn to walk and do that at some point. But today, he can stop. Because my idea today is I want a passenger. I do want him to go through all three paces. And I want him to get have my legs all over him and my hands all over him. But I'm not steering and stopping and doing a whole bunch. I'm leaving the halter on because I'm going to play around a little bit with some turns, but I'm not even really necessarily going to get into any one rain stops or anything. I'm not trying to impose much on him today. 
I'm just up here, you know, we're hopefully having a nice cool introduction to the world of being ridden. So I've sacked him out a lot. I've sacked him out while he was moving. So the next one we probably need to move on to is let's go up into second gear. And sometimes that can be an issue. Like walking's okay, they're ambling around, they go into second. The scared horse is like, well, I'm trotting and now you're trotting. You know, I'm starting to chase him as fast as he moves. That could bother him. This guy might just get cranky because he's like, really, you want me to run with you on my back? And he's gonna, I have to think about how I'm using this lead rope on his butt. Because if I keep nagging him, I could actually get more reaction. So that last one or two got a little heavier. I need him to know that I will escalate that if I need to. And he did a little jog, he's gonna get a reward for that. He doesn't have to jog a lot. All I wanted him to do was ask him to jog. That's a nice jog. This is really soft and slow. We'll pat him from his rump through to his head. Legs all over him again. Let him know that he's doing great. And then ask him to move. And I can ride pretty well, but I still go for this little panic handle just in case something comes up. Because if he jumps around and has a problem, whether I could ride, I don't want to find out if I can ride him or not. I need to try and make sure I've done everything I can to stay here. Because if he were to offload me today, that'd be a really bad lesson for him. And obviously, depending on how I land, it'd be a really bad day for me too. So he's jogging a lot freer there, which is great. And again, I'm just passengering, might flop these legs around a bit. And put my hand out, put my hand up. This is a really cool job. I'm suggesting you keep going left just because I'm a little bit inclined to do that as in i'd rather go left than right i don't know why it's just a funny little bias of mine riding the stage but it's only a little bias obviously i need to go right so we'll try to encourage him here do a little bit more to the right look at me out of this right eyeball And he's so soft and cool, he's just kind of following the fact that that lead rope's hanging out the right side. I'm not really pulling on it. But like I said, I wouldn't get in a big pulling match. So I'm not really here to Im impose on him too much. I do just want him to kind of move around, go through the gears and have to deal with a passenger now. He's plenty used to people on the ground. He's plenty used to things being on him. Now he's got to deal with somebody passengering at the same time. So years ago, to give you an even broader concept of that, years ago I used to hop on and the guy who was instructing me at the time, we'd take the halter off as well. And the horse just go around the yard wherever he wanted, do whatever he wanted, at whatever pace he wanted. You just had to ride him. Because that's what you're aiming to do on day one, is just passenger a bit. And him get used to having a passenger. I tend to leave the halter on nowadays. If he were to get a little panicky or a little fast, occasionally I'll assist him a bit. But it's an assistance. 
I'm not really trying to do too much with it. And the other thing that's really important is if he got scared and he jumped and he ran forward, I don't go bang on that holder. I sit here and I go with him. He's like, he's got to work through that. My job's going to be to stay on him while he works through it. Because if he does get scared and I bang on his head and rip into that halter, I'm just going to give him something to be more scared about. So we've sacked him out a bunch. He's trotted out. He's doing really good. We'll try and tip him up into a lope. And if he lopes around just for a few strides nice, that'll be it. If he's going to have an argument and we've seen him, you know, discuss that on the ground. When he had the canner, he got pretty cranky about it. So the canner will be interesting, but if he canters around a little bit and he does a nice job, that'll be great. I'll do a bit this way and I'll do a bit that way. If I ask him and he kind of says, well, that's all well and good, but stuff you, I'm not going to give you that bit extra. I'm going to have to push him a bit. And I need to make sure that I push him enough that he knows he's got to go when he's told. But I don't want his first lesson to be, you know, when in doubt, go. So there's another little deal like if your horse is going forward well, he's not bucking, which is true. But some people overdo the going forward and I want him going forward just enough. I don't want him to think he's got to go forward and when in doubt, go forward, like go forward's the thing. I just need him to go forward when I ask. That's the only point I've got to get across, so I've kind of got to read that as it goes. Anyway, let's see what happens. We might not have to do any of that. He might just step up into a can of really nice. Nice job. So we don't want any false fumbles and <laughs> his first takeoff was almost a fumble. He kind of did it, but he didn't really know whether he'd done what he should or not. So I just wanted a little bit more out of him. Just displayed a little bother when I did that. So we'll double check that. Let's go back this way for a bit. really smooth slope too and I almost wanted to see him do a little bit so that you'd know it was his first ride because <laughs> sometimes I start horses and I think well if I told people it was their first ride they go nah he's been ridden before <laughs> you know and they especially when they step off that cool but I still you know that argument I'm predicting not an argument, but a discussion again about who's leading and who's following. That could come on day two, day three. It could be at the end of the second week where he goes, well, yeah, well, it's been fun. And I've enjoyed this, you know, entertaining change from my normal life. You like, you're riding me around. That's great. But at some point he'll go, really? I got to do this every day. This is a forever thing. I got to carry you around. You know, and he might have a problem there. So we're we'll also do a little bit. So he's satisfied, especially today. Walk, trot, and canter, both directions, both eyeballs. I'm gonna do a little bit of just getting him to yield a little further around the side. Pat him on the head and the hip. Which again, I'm not really expecting any big hassles with that. And even if he was fractious and scared, we'd just take that in stages. And we'll talk about how I handle that lead 
in another video when I talk about how I handle a rain and how I handle a lead, you know, and how I apply pressure and how a horse can release it. I'm not trying to pull a horse off it, I'm trying to get the horse to release it. Again, I'm just kind of setting up a puzzle until he goes, oh, if I bring it right around, can I get the pressure right away? You know, that's, that's what we're chasing. So that he knows if he comes to me, there's always that spot where there's no real pressure on him. But I'm not trying to pull him off that lane go. I'm holding, like just saying he lost his balance a little, I'm holding and waiting for him to do the release. I'm not trying to make him release. And there's such a vast difference to what, you know, some people do. We did a little bit of, you know, backing him up on the ground. So we'll play around a little bit with that up here. Nice. Good job. I'll do that again. Good job. Because he's had this happen on the ground, but obviously not on the back. He releases his feet. Pressure goes away. He's doing a good job. I could get off on the left side or the right side. I'll get off on the right side just for the hell of it. Again, we want a little bend in him. If he were to get a fright at the last second, I want to make sure he's going to bend towards me and his butt will go the other way. And we're also a little close to the fence, so let's get away from that too. So kind of got to engineer that. Help him go find the middle. And he doesn't have to be dead center in the middle. I just don't want him near a fence when I'm getting off. Because I don't want him to feel pressured by the fence and I don't want to feel pressured by the fence. So he's there. I've got him bent. I've got his head around. My weight's already in a position where if he were to jump, I'm probably going to be clear anyway. And, you know, step off him the way I got on. And cool, that's pretty... That's very cool, it's a very textbook first ride. It's kind of what I'd expect from him. I did think he could have been a little bit more argumentative at some point, but he obviously, he learned his lessons from yesterday. He started today much different to yesterday. Um, so yeah, excellent, excellent first ride. He's obviously stressed to the max. <laughs> so yeah, it's a great spot for him to end. And Catch you on day three. And don't forget, go out, give your horse a rub, because he's doing the best he can with the human he got stuck with. All right, cheers. G'day. Thank you very much for watching. I do really appreciate it. This video of Gino's journey is meant to be more of a entertainment video, not educational, as in it's not a how-to video. All horses react and start differently. If you are going to attempt to start your own horse, you really need to enlist the help of a seasoned professional or get a seasoned professional to do your horse for you and get them started. It's not an easy job and it's not a job to be taken lightly because this is your horse's introduction to the rest of his riding career and it's really not to be messed with. So take it for what it is it's a lot of fun to watch it's been a lot of fun to share and i really appreciate that you've taken the time to watch it and that you'll keep watching the channel thank you very much cheers <laughs>